Appropriate Technology, Wikipedia Article Audio Appropriate technology is a movement encompassing technological choice and application that is small-scale, decentralized, labor-intensive, energy-efficient, environmentally sound, and locally autonomous. It was originally articulated as intermediate technology by the economist Dr. Ernst Friedrich Fritz Schumacher in his work Small is Beautiful. Both Schumacher and many modern-day proponents of appropriate technology also emphasize the technology as people-centered. Appropriate technology has been used to address issues in a wide range of fields. Well-known examples of appropriate technology applications include, bike and hand-powered water pumps, the universal nut sheller, self-contained solar lamps and streetlights, and passive solar building designs. Today appropriate technology is often developed using open source principles, which have led to open source appropriate technology and thus many of the plans of the technology can be freely found on the Internet. OSAT has been proposed as a new model of enabling innovation for sustainable development. Background History Appropriate technology is most commonly discussed in its relationship to economic development and as an alternative to technology transfer of more capital-intensive technology from industrialized nations to developing countries. However, appropriate technology movements can be found in both developing and developed countries. In developed countries, the appropriate technology movement grew out of the energy crisis of the 1970s and focuses mainly on environmental and sustainability issues. Today the idea is multifaceted, in some contexts, appropriate technology can be described as the simplest level of technology that can achieve the intended purpose, whereas in others, it can refer to engineering that takes adequate consideration of social and environmental ramifications. The facets are connected through robustness and sustainable living. History of Technology The Development Over Time of Systematic Techniques for Making and Doing Things The term technology, a combination of the Greek techn, art, craft, with logos, word, speech, meant in Greece a discourse on the arts, both fine and applied. When it first appeared in English in the 17th century, it was used to mean a discussion of the applied arts only, and gradually these arts themselves came to be the object of the designation. By the early 20th century, the term embraced a growing range of means, processes and ideas in addition to tools and machines. By mid-century, technology was defined by such phrases as the means or activity by which man seeks to change or manipulate his environment. Even such broad definitions have been criticized by observers who point out the increasing difficulty of distinguishing between scientific inquiry and technological activity. A highly compressed account of the history of technology such as this one must adopt a rigorous methodological pattern if it is to do justice to the subject without grossly distorting it one way or another. The plan followed in the present article is primarily chronological, tracing the development of technology through phases that succeed each other in time. Obviously, the division between phases is to a large extent arbitrary. One factor in the waiting has been the enormous acceleration of Western technological development in recent centuries. Eastern technology is considered in this article in the main only as it relates to the development of modern technology. Indian ideological leader Mahatma Gandhi is often cited as the father of the appropriate technology movement. Though the concept had not been given a name, Gandhi advocated for small, local and predominantly village-based technology to help India's villages become self-reliant. 
he disagreed with the idea of technology that benefited a minority of people at the expense of the majority or that put people out of work to increase profit. In 1925 Gandhi founded the All India Spinners Association and in 1935 he retired from politics to form the All India Village Industries Association. Both organizations focused on village-based technology similar to the future appropriate technology movement. China also implemented policies similar to appropriate technology during the reign of Mao Zedong and the following Cultural Revolution. During the Cultural Revolution, development policies based on the idea of walking on two legs advocated the development of both large-scale factories and small-scale village industries. Predecessors Despite these early examples, Dr. Ernst Friedrich Fritz Schumacher is credited as the founder of the appropriate technology movement. A well-known economist, Schumacher worked for the British National Coal Board for more than 20 years, where he blamed the size of the industry's operations for its uncaring response to the harm black lung disease inflicted on the miners. However it was his work with developing countries, such as India and Burma, which helped Schumacher form the underlying principles of appropriate technology. Schumacher first articulated the idea of intermediate technology, now known as appropriate technology, in a 1962 report to the Indian Planning Commission in which he described India as long in labour and short in capital, calling for an intermediate industrial technology that harnessed India's labour surplus. Schumacher had been developing the idea of intermediate technology for several years prior to the Planning Commission report. In 1955, following a stint as an economic advisor to the government of Burma, he published the short paper Economics in a Buddhist Country, his first known critique of the effects of Western economics on developing countries. In addition to Buddhism, Schumacher also credited his ideas to Gandhi. E. F. Schumacher Initially, Schumacher's ideas were rejected by both the Indian government and leading development economists. Spurred to action over concern the idea of intermediate technology would languish, Schumacher, George McRoby, Mansur Hoda and Julia Porter brought together a group of approximately 20 people to form the Intermediate Technology Development Group in May 1965. Later that year, a Schumacher article published in The Observer garnered significant attention and support for the group. In 1967, the group published The Tools for Progress, a guide to small-scale equipment for rural development and sold 7,000 copies. ITDG also formed panels of experts and practitioners around specific technological needs to develop intermediate technologies to address those needs. At a conference hosted by the ITDG in 1968 the term intermediate technology was discarded in favor of the term appropriate technology used today. Intermediate technology had been criticized as suggesting the technology was inferior to advanced technology and not including the social and political factors included in the concept put forth by the proponents. In 1973, Schumacher described the concept of appropriate technology to a mass audience in his influential work, Small is Beautiful, Economics as if People Mattered. Between 1966 and 1975 the number of new appropriate technology organizations founded each year was three times greater than the previous nine years. There was also an increase in organizations focusing on applying appropriate technology to the problems of industrialized nations, particularly issues related to energy and the environment. In 1977, 
the OECD identified in its appropriate technology directory 680 organizations involved in the development and promotion of appropriate technology. By 1980, this number had grown to more than 1,000. International agencies and government departments were also emerging as major innovators in appropriate technology indicating its progression from a small movement fighting against the established norms to a legitimate technological choice supported by the establishment. For example, the Inter-American Development Bank created a committee for the application of intermediate technology in 1976 and the World Health Organization established the Appropriate Technology for Health program in 1977. Appropriate technology was also increasingly applied in developed countries. For example, the energy crisis of the mid-1970s led to the creation of the National Center for Appropriate Technology in 1977 with an initial appropriation of $3 million from the U.S. Congress. The center sponsored appropriate technology demonstrations to help low-income communities find better ways to do things that will improve the quality of life, and that will be doable with the skills and resources at hand. However, by 1981 the NCAT's funding agency, Community Services Administration, had been abolished. For several decades NCAT worked with the U.S. Departments of Energy and Agriculture on contract to develop appropriate technology programs. Since 2005, NCAT's informational website is no longer funded by the U.S. government. Growing Trend In more recent years, the appropriate technology movement has continued to decline in prominence. Germany's German Appropriate Technology Exchange and Holland's Technology Transfer for Development are examples of organizations no longer in operation. Recently, a study looked at the continued barriers to ad deployment despite the relatively low cost of transferring information in the Internet age. The barriers have been identified as at seen as inferior or poor person's technology, technical transferability, and robustness of it, insufficient funding, weak institutional support, and the challenges of distance and time in tackling rural poverty. Decline A more free market-centric view has also begun to dominate the field. For example, Paul Pollock, founder of International Development Enterprises, declared appropriate technology dead in a 2010 blog post. Potential Resurgence Pollock argues the design for the other 90% movement has replaced appropriate technology. Growing out of the appropriate technology movement, Designing for the other 90% advocates the creation of low-cost solutions for the 5.8 billion of the world's 6.8 billion population who have little or no access to most of the products and services many of us take for granted. Many of the ideas integral to appropriate technology can now be found in the increasingly popular sustainable development movement which among many tenets advocates technological choice that meets human needs while preserving the environment for future generations. In 1983, the OECD published the results of an extensive survey of appropriate technology organizations titled, The World of Appropriate Technology in which it defined appropriate technology as characterized by low investment cost per workplace low capital investment per unit of output, organizational simplicity, high adaptability to a particular social or cultural environment, sparing use of natural resources, low cost of final product or high potential for employment. Today, the OECD website redirects from the glossary of statistical terms entry on appropriate technology to environmentally sound technologies.
the United Nations Index to Economic and Social Development also redirects from the appropriate technology entry to sustainable development. Terminology Despite the decline, several appropriate technology organizations are still in existence, including the ITDG which became practical action after a name change in 2005. SCAD adapted by becoming a private consultancy in 1998, though some intermediate technology activities are continued by SCAD Foundation through the Rural Water Supply Network. Another actor still very active is the charity CEAs. Pioneer in food transformation and solar heaters, it offers vocational training in West Africa and Madagascar. There is also currently a notable resurgence as viewed by the number of groups adopting open source appropriate technology because of the enabling technology of the Internet. These OSAT groups include, ACVO Foundation, Apropedia, Appropriate Technology Collaborative, Catalytic Communities, Center for Alternative Technology, Center for Development Alternatives, Engineers Without Borders, Open Source Ecology, Practical Action, and Village Earth. Most recently ASME, Engineers Without Borders and the IEEE have joined together to produce Engineering for Change which facilitates the development of affordable, locally appropriate, and sustainable solutions to the most pressing humanitarian challenges. Appropriate technology frequently serves as an umbrella term for a variety of names for this type of technology. Frequently these terms are used interchangeably, however, the use of one term over another can indicate the specific focus, bias, or agenda of the technological choice in question. Though the original name for the concept now known as appropriate technology, intermediate technology is now often considered a subset of appropriate technology that focuses on technology that is more productive than inefficient traditional technologies but less costly than the technology of industrialized societies. Other types of technology under the appropriate technology umbrella include A variety of competing definitions exist in academic literature and organization and government policy papers for each of these terms. However, the general consensus is appropriate technology encompasses the ideas represented by the above list. Furthermore, the use of one term over another in referring to an appropriate technology can indicate ideological bias or emphasis on particular economic or social variables. Some terms inherently emphasize the importance of increased employment and labor utilization, while others may emphasize the importance of human development. It is also possible to distinguish between hard and soft technologies. According to Dr. Maurice Albertson and Audrey Faulkner, appropriate hard technology is engineering techniques, physical structures, and machinery that meet a need defined by a community, and utilize the material at hand or readily available. It can be built, operated, and maintained by the local people with very limited outside assistance. It is usually related to an economic goal. Albertson and Faulkner consider appropriate soft technology as technology that deals with the social structures, human interactive processes, and motivation techniques. It is the structure and process for social participation and action by individuals and groups in analyzing situations, making choices, and engaging in choice implementing behaviors that bring about change. Practitioners some of the well-known practitioners of the appropriate technology sector include, B.V. Doshi, Buckminster Fuller, William Moyer, Amory Lovins, Sanasi Diakite, Albert Bates, Victor Papanek, Giorgio Sarajali, Frith Jof Bergman, Arnie Nice, and Mansur Hoda, Lori Baker. Development 
Schumacher's initial concept of intermediate technology was created as a critique of the currently prevailing development strategies which focused on maximizing aggregate economic growth through increases to overall measurements of a country's economy, such as gross domestic product. Developed countries became aware of the situation of developing countries during and in the years following World War II. Based on the continuing rise in income levels in Western countries since the Industrial Revolution, developed countries embarked on a campaign of massive transfers of capital and technology to developing countries in order to force a rapid industrialization intended to result in an economic takeoff in the developing countries. Porous ceramic filtration, using either clay or diatomaceous earth, and oriented as either cylinder, pot, or disc, with gravity-fed or siphon-driven delivery systems. Silver is frequently added to provide antimicrobial enhancement, intermittently operated slow sand filtration, also known as biosand filtration, chlorine disinfection, employing calcium hypochlorite powder, sodium hypochlorite solution, or sodium dichlorosocyanurate tablets, chemical flocculation, using either commercially produced iron or aluminum salts or the crushed seeds of certain plants, such as Moringa oleifer. Recent work has shown even table salt is effective at removing high-activity clays for solar water disinfection, irradiation with ultraviolet light whether using electric-powered lamps or direct solar exposure such as with the SODIS method, mixed flocculation slash disinfection using commercially produced powdered mixtures, membrane filtration, employing ultrafiltration, or reverse osmosis filter elements preceded by pretreatment. However, by the late 1960s it was becoming clear this development method had not worked as expected and a growing number of development experts and national policy makers were recognizing it as a potential cause of increasing poverty and income inequality in developing countries. In many countries, this influx of technology had increased the overall economic capacity of the country. However, it had created a dual or two-tiered economy with pronounced division between the classes. The foreign technology imports were only benefiting a small minority of urban elites. This was also increasing urbanization with the rural poor moving to urban cities in hope of more financial opportunities. The increased strain on urban infrastructures and public services led to increasing squalor, severe impacts on public health and distortions in the social structure. Appropriate technology was meant to address four problems, extreme poverty, starvation, unemployment, and urban migration. Schumacher saw the main purpose for economic development programs was the eradication of extreme poverty and he saw a clear connection between mass unemployment and extreme poverty. Schumacher sought to shift development efforts from a bias towards urban areas and on increasing the output per laborer to focusing on rural areas and on increasing employment. Deep wells with submersible pumps in areas where the groundwater are located at depths greater than 10 m, shallow wells with lined walls and covers, rainwater harvesting systems with an appropriate method of storage especially in areas with significant dry seasons, fog collection, which is suitable for areas which experience fog even when there is little rain, air wells, a structure or device designed to promote the condensation of atmospheric moisture, hand pumps and treadle pumps are generally only an option in areas is located at a relatively shallow depth. The flexi pipe pump is a notable exception to this. For deeper aquifers, submersible pumps placed inside a well are used. Treadle pumps for household irrigation are now being distributed on a widespread basis in developing countries. The principle of village level operation and maintenance is important with hand pumps, but may be difficult in application, 
Condensation bags and condensation pits can be an appropriate technology to get water, yet yields are low and are labor intensive. Still, it may be a good solution for certain desperate communities. The HIPAA water roller and Q drum allow more water to be carried with less effort and could thus be a good alternative for ethnic communities who do not wish to give up water gathering from remote locations. Assuming low topographic relief, the roundabout play pump, developed and used in southern Africa, harnesses the energy of children at play to pump water. The term appropriate technology is also used in developed nations to describe the use of technology and engineering that result in less negative impacts on the environment and society, i.e., Technology should be both environmentally sustainable and socially appropriate. E. F. Schumacher asserts that such technology, described in the book Small as Beautiful tends to promote values such as health, beauty, and permanence, in that order. In Developed Countries Applications Building and Construction Agriculture Often the type of appropriate technology that is used in developed countries is appropriate and sustainable technology, appropriate technology that, besides being functional and relatively cheap, is durable and employs renewable resources. That does not include this. Dry toilets as they save on flushing water and may allow the nutrients of the excreta to be reused in agriculture. Two examples of dry toilets are composting toilets and urine diverting dry toilets, constructed wetlands which can treat wastewater and grey water and require only little electrical power, the sand plat is a simple plate that can be used to cover the hole in the ground of pit latrines making them potentially more easy to clean and maintain, the arbor lul which is a very simple low cost type of composting toilet suitable for rural areas. In order to increase the efficiency of a great number of city services, the city itself must first be built correctly. In the developing world, many cities are expanding rapidly and new ones are being built. Looking into the city's design in advance is a must for every developing nation. The local context must be considered as, for example, Mud brick may not be durable in a high rainfall area, and, if the materials are not readily available, the method may be inappropriate. Other forms of natural building may be considered appropriate technology, though in many cases the emphasis is on sustainability and self-sufficiency rather than affordability or suitability. As such, many buildings are also built to function as autonomous buildings. One example of an organization that applies appropriate earth building techniques would be Builders Without Borders. The building structure must also be considered. Cost effectiveness is an important issue in projects based around appropriate technology, and one of the most efficient designs herein is the public housing approach. This approach lets everyone have their own sleeping slash recreation space yet incorporate communal spaces e.g. mess halls, latrines, public showers, photovoltaic solar panels, and concentrating solar power plants. PV solar panels made from low-cost photovoltaic cells or PV cells which have first been concentrated by a luminescent solar concentrator panel are also a good option. Especially companies as Soul Focus make appropriate technology CSP plants which can be made from waste plastics polluting the surroundings, solar thermal collector, wind power, micro hydro, and pico hydro, human powered hand wheel generators, other zero emission generation methods. In addition, to decrease costs of operation techniques as earth sheltering, Trombay walls, are often incorporated. 
organizations as architecture for humanity also follows principles consistent with appropriate technology, aiming to serve the needs of poor and disaster-affected people. Appropriate technology has been applied extensively to improve agricultural production in developing countries. In the United States, the National Center for Appropriate Technology operates ATRA, a National Sustainable Agriculture Assistance Program. Water and Sanitation As of 2006, Waterborne diseases are estimated to cause 1.8 million deaths each year while about 1.1 billion people lack proper drinking water. Water generally needs treatment before use, depending on the source and the intended use. The quality of water from household connections and community water points in low-income countries is not reliably safe for direct human consumption. Water extracted directly from surface waters and open hand dug shallow wells nearly always requires treatment. Appropriate technology options in water treatment include both community scale and household scale point of use designs. Water Sanitation Energy generation and uses the most reliable way to kill microbial pathogenic agents is to heat water to a rolling boil. Other techniques, such as varying forms of filtration, chemical disinfection, and exposure to ultraviolet radiation have been demonstrated in an array of randomized control trials to significantly reduce levels of waterborne disease among users in low-income countries. Over the past decade, an increasing number of field-based studies have been undertaken to determine the success of PO measures in reducing waterborne disease. The ability of PO options to reduce disease is a function of both their ability to remove microbial pathogens if properly applied and such social factors as ease of use and cultural appropriateness. Technologies may generate more health benefit than their lab-based microbial removal performance would suggest. The current priority of the proponents of PO treatment is to reach large numbers of low-income households on a sustainable basis. Few PO measures have reached significant scale thus far, but efforts to promote and commercially distribute these products to the world's poor have only been underway for a few years. On the other hand, small-scale water treatment is reaching increasing fractions of the population in low-income countries, particularly in South and Southeast Asia, in the form of water treatment kiosks. While quality control and quality assurance in such locations may be variable, sophisticated technology is applied with increasing frequency. Such micro-enterprises are able to vend water at extremely low prices, with increasing government regulation. Initial assessments of vended water quality are encouraging. Whether applied at the household or community level, some examples of specific treatment processes include Transportation Some appropriate technology water supply measures include Poor sanitation is a major issue for a large proportion of the human population, with about 2.5 billion people lacking even the most basic forms of sanitation and more than a billion people worldwide practicing open defecation in 2015 according to the Joint Monitoring Program for Water Supply and Sanitation of the United Nations. The ideas of appropriate technology influenced the provision of sanitation systems for many years. However, since about the early 2000s there has been a departure from a focus on simplistic one-size-fits-all sanitation systems. As conditions vary, sanitation systems also need to vary to meet the needs of the users and other stakeholders. Technologies for sanitation provision such as toilets, are important but only one piece of the puzzle. 
sanitation needs to be regarded as a system that includes technical and non-technical aspects, such as behavior change and management as well as political aspects the enabling environment. The overall aim should be to achieve a sustainable sanitation system. One option of achieving that aim can be the ecological sanitation approach which focuses on safe reuse of excreta. It is impossible to name all possible sanitation technologies that may fall under the category of appropriate technologies but some common systems which might be considered to be appropriate include the term soft energy technology was coined by Amory Lovins to describe appropriate renewable energy. Appropriate energy technologies are especially suitable for isolated and slash or small scale energy needs. Electricity can be provided from. Some intermediate technologies include. Finally, urine can also be used as a basis to generate hydrogen. Using urine, hydrogen production is 332% more energy efficient than using water. Electricity distribution could be improved so to make use of a more structured electricity line arrangement and universal AC power plugs and sockets. In addition, a universal system of electricity provisioning, as well as perhaps a better mains power system. Electricity storage can be provided through appropriate technology solutions as deep cycle and car batteries, long duration flywheels, electrochemical capacitors, compressed air energy storage, liquid nitrogen, and pumped hydro. Many solutions for the developing world are sold as a single package, containing a electricity generation power plant and energy storage. Such packages are called remote area power supply. Health care. Food preparation and storage. Human-powered vehicles include the bicycle, which provides general-purpose transportation at lower costs compared to motorized vehicles, and many advantages over walking, and the whirlwind wheelchair which provides mobility for disabled people who cannot afford the expensive wheelchairs used in developed countries. Animal-powered vehicles slash transport may also be another appropriate technology. Certain zero-emissions vehicles may be considered appropriate transportation technology, including compressed air cars, liquid nitrogen, and hydrogen-powered vehicles. Also, Vehicles with internal combustion engines may be converted to hydrogen or oxyhydrogen combustion. Bicycles can also be applied to commercial transport of goods to and from remote areas. An example of this is Caraba, a free trade coffee co op in Rwanda, which uses 400 modified bicycles to carry hundreds of pounds of coffee beans for processing. Other projects for developing countries include the redesign of cycle rickshaws to convert them to electric power. However recent reports suggest that these rickshaws are not plying on the roads. Information and Communication Technologies According to the Global Health Council, rather than the use of professionally schooled doctors, the training of villagers to remedy most maladies in towns in the developing world is most appropriate. Trained villagers are able to eliminate 80% of the health problems. Small hospitals based on the model of the jammed hospital can remedy another 15%, while only 5% will need to go to a larger hospital. Finance Determining a sustainable approach Related social movements Note that many appropriate technologies benefit public health, in particular by providing sanitation and safe drinking water. Refrigeration may also provide a health benefit. This was too found at the Comprehensive Rural Health Project and the Women Health Volunteers projects in countries as Iran, Iraq, and Nepal. Some proven intensive 
low-effort food production systems include urban gardening. Indoor cultivation may be set up using hydroponics with grow lights, while outdoor cultivation may be done using permaculture, forest gardening, no-till farming, do-nothing farming, etc. In order to better control the irrigation outdoors, special irrigation systems may be created as well. One such system for the developing world is discussed here. Crop production tools are best kept simple. Tools can include scythes, animal pulled plows, dibbers, wheeled augers, kerpus, hoes. Greenhouses are also sometimes included. Sometimes they are also fitted with irrigation systems, and slash or heat sink systems which can respectively irrigate the plants or help to store energy from the sun and redistribute it at night. According to proponents, appropriate technologies can greatly reduce the labor required to prepare food, compared to traditional methods while being much simpler and cheaper than the processing used in Western countries. This reflects E.F. Schumacher's concept of intermediate technology, i.e. technology which is significantly more effective and expensive than traditional methods, but still an order of magnitude cheaper than developed world technology. Key examples are through financial systems envisioned especially for the poor-slash-developed world, many companies have been able to get started with only limited capital. Often banks lend the money to people wishing to start a business. In other systems, people for a rotating savings and credit association or ROSCA to purchase costly material together. Organizations, communities, cities, or individuals can provide loans to other communities slash cities. Finally, in certain communities everything of value is shared. This is called gift economy. Features such as low cost, low usage of fossil fuels and use of locally available resources can give some advantages in terms of sustainability. For that reason, these technologies are sometimes used and promoted by advocates of sustainability and alternative technology. Besides using natural, locally available resources, waste materials imported from cities using conventional waste management may be gathered and reused to build a sustainable living environment. Use of these cities' waste material allows the gathering of a huge amount of building material at a low cost. When obtained, the materials may be recycled over and over in the own city slash community, using the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design method. Locations where waste can be found include landfills, junkyards, on water surfaces and anywhere around towns or near highways. Organic waste that can be reused to fertilize plants can be found in sewages. Also, Town districts and other places that are subject of undergoing renovation or removal can be used for gathering materials as stone, concrete, or potassium. Bioalcohols as bioethanol, biomethanol, and biobutanol. The first two require minor modifications to allow them to be used in conventional gasoline engines. The third requires no modifications at all vegetable oils which can be used only in internal combustion engines. Biofuels are locally available in many developing countries and can be cheaper than fossil fuels, anaerobic digestion power plants, biogas is another potential source of energy, particularly where there is an abundant supply of waste organic matter. A generator can be run more efficiently if combined with batteries and an inverter, this adds significantly to capital cost but reduces running cost, and can potentially make this a much cheaper option than the solar, wind and microhydro options. Dry animal dung fuel can also be used, 
Biochar is another similar energy source which can be obtained through charring of certain types of organic material in a pyrolysis unit. A similar energy source is Terra Preta Nova. Before being able to determine the cause of the disease or malady, accurate diagnosis is required. This may be done manually and by specialized tools, a phase change incubator, developed in the late 1990s, is a low-cost way for health workers to incubate microbial samples, birth control is also seen as an appropriate technology, especially now, because of increasing population numbers, increasing food prices and poverty. It has been proposed to a certain degree by PATH. Jaipur leg was developed by Dr. P. K. Sethi and Master G. Ram Chander in 1968 as an inexpensive prosthetic leg for victims of landmine explosions. The leveraged Freedom Chair is a low cost wheelchair designed specifically for rough terrain. Natural cleaning products can be used for personal hygiene and cleaning of clothing and eating utensils in order to decrease illnesses slash maladies. The Malian peanut sheller, the Fanyo husking machine, the screenless hammer mill, the ISF corn mill, the ISF rice huller, all other types of electrical or hand-operated kitchen equipment special multifunctional kitchen robots that are able to perform several functions are able to reduce costs even more. Examples of these devices were e.g. the Piccolo household appliance from Hamel Manwerka it was equipped with a flexible axis, allowing a variety of aids to be screwed on.